I think I have found the perfect keyboard for the iPad mini. So uh, stick around and I'll tell you all about it. Hello, welcome to Take One Tech. My name's Alec. Now, I've recently acquired the latest iPad mini and I am in love with the iPad all over again. I did buy the first iPad mini when it came out and it was for me the perfect size. I'm a fan of the smallest iPhone <laughs> and the smallest iPad uh, and then pair that with the biggest computer. <laughs> that is the way that I sort of work because uh, the iPad I want as something that I can just sort of take out with me, still get stuff done on it, but isn't going to be too cumbersome for me to carry around. And just to give you a bit of context, uh, what I tend to carry around as my daily carry. <laughs> there is a thing, everyday carry, isn't there? And I'm not going to turn this into an EDC channel, by the way. Uh, but I will just show you this nevertheless, because I am in love with this bag, the Peak Design uh, Tech Pouch. Uh, so it is a uh, great little bag. And I'll just show you this is what I carry around day to day. I'm not going to start pulling it out. I know there are channels that do this, but uh, this is not one of those as yet. <laughs> uh, but I do like the way that it is uh, really hardy uh, material, uh, whatever the grade of nylon it is. <laughs> uh, but you just open it up like that and it's got all these different uh, pouches in it for storing cables, various different things like that, a set of headphones, got a little microphone in there, all sorts of different things. Uh, and it's just some really good sort of organization, little stretchy pockets and so on. Uh, now, what I used to carry around with that, oh, and of course there are the obligatory uh, pen holders there tucked away in the pocket in the top there. Um, and what I always used to carry around in this was my uh, Baron Fig Confidant Notebook. <laughs> these are my notebooks of uh, choice uh, uh, the uh, dot grid version in case you're interested <laughs> um, and so this fits perfectly in here and so that's what I used to carry around with me when I wanted to make any notes and I'd obviously already have my uh, my phone with me and stuff like that so um, when I got the iPad mini I was uh, I was not surprised to know that it fit perfectly in here because actually the makers of the uh, Baron Fig notebook made it <laughs> exactly to the dimensions of uh, an iPad uh, mini <laughs> literally to the corner radius and everything uh, with space for the pencil along the side there. So that is the dimension. So the iPad mini does indeed uh, fit perfectly into uh, the, the uh, that bag. So then there is the potential now to get some uh, real work done on the uh, the iPad mini. As I say, with the iPad Pro, I just uh, I just found that I wasn't really using it that much. It was it was too big and cumbersome to take out with me if I was going anywhere where I just wanted a small bag. If I got my laptop bag, I would invariably have my laptop in it. Uh, and then just around the house, uh, it ended up just getting used for, I guess, sort of content consumption, you know, watching YouTube videos, things like that, I guess. Um, but usually these are now uh, cartoons that are being watched as my daughter has uh, sort of uh, acquired it from me <laughs> for the past uh, couple of years, in fact. Um, although I do still grab it and uh, get it when I'm doing uh, telestration and things like that for meetings and so on while she's at, uh, at school. In any case, I digress because we're talking about the iPad mini. I am totally in love with the iPad mini once again uh, and with the whole iPad ecosystem, really. Uh, I'm definitely in love with the uh, paper-like uh, paper <laughs> like feel that you can get for the... Uh, uh, well, that was a bit of a messed up sentence, wasn't it? The paper-like screen cover that you can get that makes the screen of the iPad feel just like paper. Uh, it doesn't make it feel just like paper, but it certainly comes a lot closer uh, and it does feel that... Uh, it feels more like you're writing on paper as opposed to writing on glass with a stylus. So I'm really, yeah, I'm really loving that. And I am using it a whole lot more for uh, my note taking and things like that. It has become my uh, note taking <laughs> tool of choice over and above the old uh, notebooks. So then uh, if I'm going to do some real work on it, then I also need to be able to type on it. And this is the problem that I've always had with, uh, with the iPad mini or with iPads in general, really, is the fact that the uh, keyboards that you can get for them are never really that good. I know that the latest uh, Apple keyboard for the uh, larger iPads is uh, supposed to be very good. I've never actually used one myself because I don't have uh, the larger size iPad. Um, but certainly the one that I had with the iPad Pro, the original iPad Pro, uh, it was all right. It was good, but it's not really the same as writing on a regular size keyboard. There are people who make keyboard cases for the iPad mini or they'll make uh, 
portable keyboards that are the same size as the iPad mini so that you can still fit them in your bag and whatnot. But the problem about that is though, uh, I'm back to my little uh, cramped fingers on the typing surface, <laughs> whether it's a physical surface or, you know, the glass of the iPad. Uh, and it's not really, uh, it's not really very manageable like that, is it? Uh, for me, if I haven't got a proper key physical keyboard where I know exactly where the keys are, then it's pretty much useless. I do like the fact that the iPad is something that you can actually hold like this and type. So I'll often, you know, find myself doing that if I'm just taking, have just the iPad in my hand. It is quite good for the odd occasional casual note and things like that, or for searching on the uh, the web. Uh, but yeah, to get real work done, it's uh, it's a bit of a problem. There are a number of folding keyboards on the market. I always have a problem with these though, because it is the way that they fold. And if I just pop one up for an example, this is the Microsoft folding keyboard. Really good build quality, really lightweight, good battery life, all these sorts of things. Uh, it's sort of like a rubberized uh, feel to the uh, the case of it and then hard keys in the middle. Uh, so it's, uh, you know, certainly I think that this is a uh, better in terms of the uh, functionality than the original uh, Apple keyboard case. Uh, however, it still has this big issue with the folding keyboard, which is it has this big gap down the middle of it. And uh, that is pretty useless if you are used to uh, touch typing, that everything is so, sort of slightly out of place. Uh, and so that is why <laughs> I've never been a fan of these. So this is the problem that I was looking to solve. Uh, and I have actually found uh, what I think is almost the holy grail. <laughs> And it's this. It is a folding keyboard that, in my mind, actually works. Now, first of all, let's have a little look at the size of it. In fact, let me bring the iPad back and I'll show you the size of it next to the iPad. So there you go. It is um, a bit thicker than the iPad. Not quite double the thickness, maybe one and a half times as thick, something like that. Uh, but you can see it's nowhere near as uh, long or not quite as long and not quite as wide <laughs> that there it is in terms of size. Uh, so how does this function in terms of a, an actual keyboard? Well, check this out. This is, in fact, a full size keyboard. So here is my uh, Apple keyboard and this will fit exactly over the top of it because it is an identical match in terms of the size of the keys. It's amazing. It is a work of art in my mind. <laughs> and how they've achieved this is by the folding mechanism. Can you see how the there is no sort of almost, I mean, there is a visible join, but there's no obvious join because the way that it folds is as it folds in, some of them fold under and some of them fold over, if you like, I guess. Uh, and so although there is a single line of a pivot point, which is down here, um, the actual joining edge is not straight. So it sort of zigzags around all of the keys. And that means that as you fold it, uh, everything tucks up nicely away. Uh, you've got this protective edge around here that sort of covers all of the edges. So as I'm folding it in, that just sort of locks it in place. And it is, uh, it is a work of art, <laughs> an actual full-size keyboard. The thing that I had an issue with uh, some of the other key folding keyboards that I've tried, because I've tried quite a few, <laughs> in the past um, was that they were either made of plastic so not very good or they were made of metal uh, but in any case there was uh, often some slippage shall we say or there was no uh, strong mechanism to actually fix them uh, in the middle so I had one that folded out that was plastic so it used to slip all over the place but also the issue was that the, uh, the, the there had to be a sort of a physical locking mechanism to try and hold it flat um, but when you uh, lock that it never felt really uh, strong well the thing about this one is uh, the main central part is the actual the body of it so there's no central fold you've got these two folds at the edges but then also you just have these two little feet that fold down and what that means is that when it's folded flat it sits on the little feet at the end and then these two parts here uh, and then the folding foot at the other end but the other thing is the folding feet have little rubberized uh, ends to them so when it's sitting on the desk it actually it actually doesn't move around and when you are typing there's no slippage it's not just sliding all over the desk at a push you can also just use it on your knee as well because the fold uh, there's two folds either side so you can actually just rest it on your knee and type with it like that if you wanted to i'm usually sitting i don't know in a coffee shop on a plane or wherever it is uh, and so it's sitting on a hard surface but because of the way that it folds you could actually uh, it doesn't physically lock in place 
but you could actually just rest it on your knees and tie it with it. I've done a, a little test just to see that it works and it does. <laughs> I won't be doing a lot of work like that. Uh, but when it's on the desk, I really could get a whole load of work to, done on it. So as well as being full size keys, the other thing that I really like about it is that it does have literally the full keyboard. So just like you would get on your uh, laptop, perhaps obviously not an extended keyboard like this one with the number pad and whatever, um, but it does have the number keys and then also the function key row as well. The other thing that's great about this is it will pair with up to three devices, Bluetooth. It's Bluetooth 5.1, so it's the latest Bluetooth, so uh, you're not going to have quite as many potential connection issues because that's also another bit of a bugbear with uh, some of these Bluetooth keyboards is uh, you sort of dropping letters and things like that. Uh, so this is going to have a good, uh, good connection, uh, and you've got these three different Bluetooth devices, and you just hold down the, uh, the function key and you can just switch between those. It has obviously got things like, uh, you have, obviously if you're using with iPad, uh, then you can go to the home screen and all these sorts of shortcuts. Once you use a regular keyboard with an iPad, it's a bit of a game changer anyway, if you haven't done this already, because it does open up a whole load of things like, uh, you know, keyboard shortcuts that you would use on the Mac. A lot of those translate over into the, uh, into the iPad as well. But if you are really paranoid about the uh, the Bluetooth and have issues with using Bluetooth keyboards, well, guess what? There is also a quite a long cable, actually, a regular keyboard length cable, I would say. <laughs> I don't know exactly how long it is. Probably about a meter. <laughs> um, and it's got a little charging socket on the bottom so you can uh, charge it up. By the way, the battery life is around about, I think, 100 hours, something like that. Uh, so you're not going to worry about the, uh, the battery running out. Uh, but if you plug this into the, uh, the back of it, if I plug it in the right way around, it's a USB, uh, a micro USB rather. So this is how you charge it. However, you can also plug this into your computer or if you, have, like I've got in my bag, have got a micro USB to USB-C, you can actually just plug it directly into the port on the bottom of your iPad mini uh, or into your computer or wherever, your laptop. And then as well as the uh, three Bluetooth options, you also have a wired option there as well. So you can just press the function key and that, and then it was literally just a wired keyboard. So while it's charging as well, uh, you can just use it as a wired keyboard. So if you have got any concerns or uh, <laughs> issues with using a Bluetooth keyboard with your uh, iPad, you can just plug it straight in. Uh, what more can I say about this? Well, I can tell you what else I can say. I bought the wrong one. I didn't really buy the wrong one. It's just that the right one wasn't available. <laughs> so this is the iClever uh, BK20 Special Edition. And this was, this came out, uh, after, I don't know exactly how long it came out, but it was a, a later model that came out. Um, but they have now released one, which is the iClever BK05 which is exactly the same as this. This was almost like, I suppose, the, uh, I guess, the prototype for that. Uh, the difference with the BK05 is it's exactly the same, but it has got backlighting on it as well. Uh, obviously, you're gonna sacrifice a bit of battery life if you have that switched on, uh, but the beauty is you don't actually have to have it switched on. So let me just uh, quickly show you this because uh, it is amazing. And obviously, you're probably wondering, this is going to cost quite a lot, isn't it? I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised by this. Let me just come over to this view for a moment. There we go. <laughs> it is the iClever BK05 is the one you want. And if I just come onto here, you can see you can choose between uh, red backlighting, green backlighting and blue backlighting. I mean, that's a really nice touch, actually. Uh, certainly if you're on planes and things like that, the uh, the red in the very dark uh, <laughs> dark environment if you're on a night flight <laughs> and you're up working through the night uh, the red certainly works well but it's nice to have these three different colors actually like i say i can't demo that because i got the other model because this one sadly wasn't available in thailand i did look at it actually to get it from uh, from amazon obviously um but what i noticed was there was uh, quite a lot of shipping and import duties uh, to allow for it to come in so you can see that there's uh, it's almost one and a half times as much as the product itself is for shipping to thailand which is where i am so i figured and as well not knowing uh, how well it was going to perform i figured i'd just get the one that i could get locally uh, but now i might be uh, looking to <laughs> might be looking to get this one but i don't really do much night flying these days <laughs> in fact i don't really move that far from the house i'm either in the house or in the coffee shop now, one thing to be aware about, if you are, uh, I'll, I'll leave a link to this one in the description below, uh, but when you are looking for these, uh, there is an easy mistake to make. So this is the iClever BK05. 
Um, there is an iClever BK03. This is actually the first model that they brought out uh, quite some time ago now. And as you can see, it looks pretty much identical uh, from these pictures. Um, however, what you'll see is when you uh, look at it closer up, uh, it has actually only got the uh, the number row and the function keys are, are literally you have to press a function key first to activate them and it's much much smaller as well it is one of these sort of micro keyboards if you like so you can almost see i guess l where this guy's hands are uh, it is really tiny so if you are looking for a much smaller folding keyboard this is i think when it's folded up is about the you know the width of a uh, plus size iphone um, then this is another option. There is another one that they make, which is interesting, which basically uh, combines this keyboard, but they've actually built in a trackpad to it as well. But again, you are on this really tiny size keyboard. And so if you've got some serious work to do, uh, I'll leave it up to you as whether you can do that on a small keyboard. But the prices of these are all pretty similar, actually. The one with the, uh, the trackpad is about the same as the one uh, that I'm using, or at least the backlit version of the one I'm using. Um, and then the uh, teeny tiny one is a little bit less. I'm really happy with it. I've only been using it for a little while now, but I will be doing a, a sort of full in-depth review, I guess, after I've been using it for a couple of months uh, because, um, yeah, see how it works sort of in the field as it were. Uh, but certainly my uh, first impressions of it, of using it for a few days are very good and it's working exactly as uh, advertised. <laughs> it feels sturdy as well. It does also, uh, if this is an issue, not an issue if this is a uh, a sell, a selling point it does come with a uh, little sort of <laughs> velvety uh, velvety bag so when it's all shut up it does just fit in that and then that fits perfectly in my uh, my bag it also just is instant on and off so when it's closed it's off uh, and then when you want to get to work you literally just open it up like that and then that's it it's on uh, the pairing of it is pretty simple you've got the function key down here uh, and then you've got a little pairing button there so you just select the particular uh, one two or three bluetooth that you want uh, and then select pairing and it will come on uh, you can also check the uh, battery level by pressing that it will just flash to tell you how uh, full the battery is but like i say i don't think you need to worry too much about battery i think with the uh with the backlight on then battery life is more like about 10 hours something like that i you, well, don't quote me on that <laughs> uh but certainly with uh, without the backlighting then uh even if you're using the backlit model but just with that function turned off uh then yeah it's something like 100 hours or something so i'll uh, i'll give this a full test and see how long it lasts but yeah certainly the build quality feels great the functionality is great uh and i think i have now just made myself that much more productive in the coffee shop maybe i'm just looking for an excuse to go to the coffee shop more now that things have opened up a bit i'm not too sure but in any case it's a really great product i'll leave a link to uh, all three models down in the description below obviously and if you found this useful then uh, while you're down there obviously don't forget to hit the like button subscribe and turn on notifications uh, and if you're really feeling uh, like uh, you found it useful then you can also head over to my uh, buy me a coffee page at buymeacoffee.com slash take one tech so i've just got distracted somebody just come into the room how rude <laughs> never mind uh for now that is all for the uh micro keyboards or folding keyboards uh, but i'll leave a link to some more great content over on the uh, right hand side so uh don't go anywhere stick around and i'll see you in the next video